hey guys welcome back to my channel so my name is Deborah, and if you're new here welcome please don't forget to subscribe so um today's video is going to be about tips on buying a property so whether it's your first property or your second property i'm pretty sure if you've bought a property before there's a lot of things that you know you've gone through the process so there's a lot of things that you'd um know but if you haven't um yeah just like me, I was a first time buyer at one point and literally I had to learn the hard way because I wasn't aware of certain things and the hard way meaning I lost out on some money, yeah. Number one, um, check your credit. So um, you've got platforms like Experian, get your credit checked out because mortgage lenders, um, these are the people that are actually gonna borrow the money um, and give you the mortgage. They would run a credit check and if you've got a bad credit score then you know it's yeah it's going to be a difficult one two would be um the properties that you you know have an interest in it's always good to check the properties around um that house has sold for platforms like zoopla you go on um zoopla and you just type in the postcode it should give you um details on like the rental estimate so how much you can rent the property for number three would be types of property um it's always good to know the types of property you're buying so for instance um if it's a bisf house then um some lenders would not want to lend you money on that house so you kind of reduce and narrow yourself in the amount of lenders that can borrow you money Another issue is um, Japanese knotweed, so it's always good to find out. Um, typically, if a property does have um, Japanese knotweed, then the value of the property does um, go down and you've got to get a professional contractor in order to um, get rid of the Japanese knotweed. It's not something you can get rid of yourself. Number four would be um, when you're in the process. So this is, this is something I did and I didn't know. I didn't know, so um, yeah, it cost me um, some money. I switched jobs whilst I was going through the mortgage process and my lenders were um, the bank that I banked with and they noticed the change in my salary and that affected um, my mortgage offer and how much they were willing to lend me simply because I changed jobs so yeah I had to fork out an extra bit of money so guys don't change jobs when you're in the process make sure you get the keys of your house before you don't decide to change jobs so number five would be don't incur extra debt whilst you're going through the process of your um, mortgage and everything. So for instance, you want to get that nice bag, you want to get that nice shoe, you want to get a, a new car, don't do it. Wait until you get your keys and you complete before you do it because then if they do run a, another credit check just before they want to lend you the money, they can see that, okay, you've taken out an, a, a car you know, of 10 grand or 15 grand or you've incurred an extra five grand on your credit card and then they're like okay so you've got this sort of um responsibility now so we can't lend you as much money as we intended to so these are factors that one has to think of like even though yes you've got your mortgage offer it's not until you complete you know that's when you know that okay yes you can once you've completed and you've got your keys as long as you keep up with the repayments um you can go and buy yourself a a 20 grand car on finance if you want so number six um i personally went through this and i lost out some money on this as well so guys if you are buying a property make sure you get an insurance called a home buyer's insurance so surewise is um, a company that offer this and home alliance insurance as well so they these are two platforms that you know you can go to, to get this um, type of insurance make sure you get that insurance within seven days and the reason why I say that is because I didn't get that insurance I saw a property that I liked and yes I instructed the solicitor I'd had my mortgage offer and everything was going so well and bam the vendor just woke up one morning I don't understand and just said oh she doesn't want to sell the property anymore because um this was a property that she inherited from her parents so she was like it's sentimental and she's just realized that she doesn't want to sell the property anymore that she's going to stay in the property we were just about days up until when we wanted to exchange like she said she doesn't want to sell the property anymore the solicitors had done all the work all the searches for the house and I'd even got um, a surveyor to go to the property. So the surveyor cost me like 600 and um, 
the solicitor charged me abortive costs so abortive cost is basically they've done all the work leading up to exchanging contract and the vendors pulled out and obviously they've done the work so i still have to pay them I'm still legally blinded to pay them and um, they conducted searches as well and i was an extra like 390 pounds and i was just like you just woke up one morning and decided to just drop out like that's cost me money and that came out of my pocket and that was almost two thousand pounds that i just had to just chuck in the bin because she woke up one morning saying she doesn't want to sell the property anymore and i didn't have that insurance in place if i did have that insurance in place then i would have gone through um the claiming procedure and typically um, the insurance would cover you for instance if the vendor pulls out or if the surveyor goes into the property and the property has been valued um a lot less i think to, is, i think it's about 10 percent a lot less than what it's on the market for or there's another one called um gazumpt. so that means if another person sees the property and puts a higher offer in and the vendor the seller who's selling the property accepts it then that's another way where you can lose the property so all these factors are ways on how you know you know you can lose the property and if you've Put money in in terms of getting a surveyor out there to survey the house and you've instructed solicitors or you've even gone through the process of um having to uh, pay a mortgage broker and all these sort of stuff these are costs that you incur and you still have to pay them regardless so if you have this insurance in place and so it's really key it's only about what 49 to 70 69 pounds they yeah they range obviously there's different grades so there's bronze silver and gold but 49 pounds 50 pounds compared to 2000 pounds which one would you opt for i definitely opt for the 50 pound one so yeah so that's that's a very key one but yes guys um thanks for tuning in those are the six tips that um i just felt to share with you guys especially if you're a first time buyer these are um tips that you know would help you and save you some money because you were no first time buyer you know you stacked up all that money and then you you lose two thousand pounds that that's money for furniture that's money for um your appliances you know and all that sort of stuff when you move into your house so yes guys um thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe like and do comment below if you've had any you know experiences when you're buying your home if you're looking to buy a new home if you're a first time buyer comment below and yeah subscribe like and comment and i will see you in my next video bye for now <laughs>